it going? Devin here again, and we're continuing on with this lesson series here at CountryGuitarOnline.com, learning how to play really nice country and bluegrass sounding chord embellishments, nice filler riffs that you can add in between your chord transitions, lead guitar techniques, all sorts of cool stuff like that. And we're starting out this series with the most basic concepts, very beginner stuff. We're just going to build upon each technique one video at a time. So if you haven't watched the previous lessons in this series, I'd recommend checking those out first and then watch them and you'll get caught up to where we're at today in this series and be ready to go for the concepts that we're going we're gonna to add on today. And in this whole series, we are focusing on the note combinations that will make your playing sound the most country and bluegrass because all these scales and all these concepts and everything that we're talking about they they can be applied to tons of different genres of music you know rock classical um i don't know blues jazz all that stuff they share the same scales all these same scales but it's the way that you play the notes and the different note combinations that you use that'll make your playing sound most country and bluegrass so that's what i'm going to show you and we're going to talk about as we go through this whole series what note combinations will make your playing sound country and sound bluegrass <laughs> So pretty cool stuff, but we're going to start very slow, you know, and learn all the basic concepts. And the point of this whole series is for you to actually understand what you're playing instead of just memorizing songs and, and playing back these songs uh, exactly like you rehearsed them without, without understanding where do these notes are coming from and all that stuff. Anyways, last lesson we learned what I call the most important position of the pentatonic scale, and that was the fifth position of the G major pentatonic scale right here. Very simple scale. And I also showed you how to apply those notes to just a basic country and bluegrass chord progression, just like this. One E and a two E. like that very easy way to use them with the progression so watch that previous video this previous video in this series if you haven't you can learn how to do that but today in this lesson we're going to add on a few extra notes so you can start branching out of this basic stripped down pentatonic scale and the notes that we're going to add on in this lesson are just the extra notes of the major scale and there's there aren't too many of them there's just a few extra notes so if you listen to this these scales. I was talking about in the previous lesson too that the major pentatonic scales, they're just a stripped down version of the major scale. And that's it. There's, that's all there is to it. So here's the pentatonic scale. And now here is the complete major scale. It's like four extra notes and that's it. I'm going to show you where those notes are and then I'll show you how to use them in different riffs. Let's throw up the chart for this major scale. You see in this chart, the one at the top is close to what we've been looking at up to, up to this point. Um, all those highlighted notes, those are the extra notes that we're gonna learn today. And all the notes in the black, those are just the pentatonic scale notes that we learned in the last lesson. <clears throat> and then right there at the bottom, that other chart, that's just a tablature version of the scale. So you can follow the, each of those notes uh, one note at a time and play up the scale, this G major scale. Okay, so let's play through the scale slowly. Let's learn the first octave of the scale first and uh, I'll talk through a few things. So here we go. And let's use alternate picking with the right hand like we've been doing, practicing with. Down, up, down, up, down, up, just like that. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the first octave. Let's play through the first octave one more time. And practice along with me or pause the video after I play this to, to learn it. So here we go. Starting right there on the third fret, the root note, that G. Six, 
And that's the first octave. If you're not familiar with the term octave, an octave is just a span of eight notes in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one octave right there. And that's the complete scale. So every scale is going to have eight notes in it. The first note is going to be that root note. In this case, it's the G since we're in the key of G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the eighth note is a G also. So you end, you start on the G, and then you end on another G, just an octave higher. The same note, just octave higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. G, 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 G. So that's the idea in all these scales. Very basic level. That's the first octave right there. Pause the video if you need to practice that anymore. But let's move on to the second octave right here. And there's an another full octave right above that in the same exact position. Oops. Same exact notes, same exact scale, just all one octave higher. A little slower. That's it. So as you learn this scale and you practice it, like I was talking about in the pentatonic scale video, I'd recommend starting at that root note right there, the third fret, low E string, that G and play out the scale, just like this. And then play back down the scale. And try to play it continuous without stopping. The fingering with the left hand, depending on what riff you're playing, what you're playing, you know, the fingering may change. You know, the fingering is not that big a deal, and I'm sure as you're learning this, you'll work out the fingering on your own. You'll figure out what fingers with the left hand you need to use to be able to play the scale. I typically just start with my left ring finger and then work up the scale right there to my middle ring. And the only main thing here on this, uh, you're gonna have to change up. The fingering once you get to the fourth string on that part on that section of the scale fourth string I use my left open left pointer ring finger open and right there on that part I use my pointer in my ring as well open pointer ring middle ring so anyways just mess around with the, the finger on your own. I'm not going to get too detailed on that now. So that's the G major scale. And when you learn it, pay close attention to that, that chart and try to figure out, you know, remember in your mind, which, um, which notes are the extra notes that we're adding. Those highlighted notes there, those extra major scale notes. Because when I think about my riffs and when, when I start traveling the neck, especially in my mind, I visualize the basic stripped down pentatonic scale. And then from there, um, then I, I know like what surrounding notes around that scale can I play. So in this case, you know, here's the, dun, 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 dun. there's one of the extra notes that we're adding in today of that major scale, that C right there on the third fret, fifth string. I know in my mind, you know, here's the pentatonic scale. I know that I can add in now that note, that C, also when I'm when I'm soloing. And you can throw it in in all sorts of different ways. Instead of just playing that boring pentatonic scale. Very good 
great example of what I was playing just there. You know, it didn't sound that musical. But to give you all a little help on these riffs and to get you started, there's a PDF that you can download right below this video. Click the download button. I've got about 12 riffs, and I'll, I'll show you all how you can use those in a second. Um, but just know that that's there as a guide. So try to, try to remember and, and think about the extra notes that we're adding in right here from this major scale um, as you're practicing the scale. So your homework from this lesson is to practice and memorize this G major scale. Really get it, just grind it out to where you're uh, completely familiar with it. You, you know it just as well as any chord transition that you would know, any chord progression like switching from the G to C to D. Get it down to that, that level of, of familiarity, I guess. Where you'll be able to, then, then after you have it memorized, then you can start pulling the different notes and trying to change up the order and all that good stuff. Okay, so how do you apply this to that chord progression? I just want to show you how you can use it in the exact same way that we did in the previous video. So in the previous lesson, we did this boom chick pattern with the right hand, you know, boom chick, boom chick, boom chick, boom chick. Just like that. Quick refresher, the chord progression that we'll look at right now is just two bars of G, and we'll, we'll count 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, just like that. Starting with the G, two bars. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and now one bar of C, two, three E and a, four E and a, to one bar of G, and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one bar of D, with one bar of G. This is that six chord progression. And now let's do, and let's start adding in these, these notes to the major scale. And we'll do two bar, the first two counts, we'll do the rhythm, just like this. One E and a, two E and a. And then after that, for the three E and a, four E and a's, we'll add in these scale notes. Three E, three E and a, four E and a. Like that. So from the beginning, when you combine those two, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And you can play any of the notes of the scale for the three E and a, four E and us, you know. Just change it up. Once you learn that scale, it doesn't matter, you know, they all sound good sound good and one really important thing is and this is kind of confusing when you're first starting out um, you can use the G major scale over all of the chords in this progression because this progression is, it's in the key of G so you are able to use the G major scale over any of the chords in that progression that's why you can use the same scale over an entire song and it sounds good over every single chord There are exceptions to that. Once you get into very complex chord progressions, more like jazz type of stuff, bluegrass has this some too, but we're not even gonna get close to that um, in the, this early in the series. We'll, we'll cover that stuff way later on. And it's not difficult concepts either. Very simple stuff, but we gotta build our way up to that for, before we get to that. But for 99% of the songs, you can use the same scale over the entire song. It's gonna sound awesome. So that PDF that you're gonna download, it's got those 12 riffs on it. They are all the same length. They are there as long as the three E and a, four E and a, you know, all similar type of riffs you can use over that three E and a, four E and a. E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. Some of that stuff may sound complicated if you're just starting out, but trust me, it's not that hard. 
if you really just slow this down. That's the first step, is just memorizing that scale. Once you get better at mixing your rhythm and these riffs in there, you can change up the way that you're doing this. You know, you could play instead of like we're doing it, two counts of the rhythm and then two counts of the, the riff part, you can do maybe three counts of rhythm instead and then one part of the riff, like this maybe. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a like that. One E, so the four E and a will be the riff. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E. That's all we're really gonna cover in this lesson. In next lessons, we are gonna start adding on some of the blue scale notes and the minor pentatonic scale notes. And that is really what is gonna complete this overall sound. That's what's gonna make this sound the most country in bluegrass. Because once you start adding in those blues notes and all that stuff. <laughs> That's when you really get that awesome country and bluegrass sound. And all that stuff I played right there, it's, it's more advanced and we will get there eventually, but we're gonna start out just so slow on you know, adding in those, country, those uh, blues and minor pentatonic scale notes in the following lessons. So at this point in the series, practice the major scale, the G major scale, memorize it, play it up and down the scale with the metronome, and start out with a slow speed on the metronome, then uh, work your way up, and just focus on getting those clean picks in there, all that stuff we've been talking about. Practice it with the rhythm, um, chord progressions, and that I'll see y'all at the next lesson, and we'll start adding on uh, extra notes and those blue scale notes and all that good stuff. Hopefully that helped you all out. If you have any questions on this, drop it in the comment box. But I will see you all next time here at countryguitaronline.com.